Welcome back to Armenia. Welcome to Civilitas. Welcome to Civilnet. Good morning. Good morning. If I were to ask you to fill in the blank, when you left Armenia, you left under blank circumstances. Five right? years ago this month, in fact. It was this month? Yes. Well, we did well to invite you now. Good timing. Um, in, in retrospect, any regrets? No regrets. Uh, I did not make a slip of the tongue. I knew what I was doing. I knew why I was doing it. And I knew there would be consequences. I didn't know precisely what the consequences would be. Uh, I knew there would be a range of consequences, anything from having my head cut off to uh, a slap on the wrist. And in the end, it was something in the middle. And of course, I wasn't removed immediately. I uh, served another 18 months, um, and I think we did some good work in those days. What exactly did you say? Well, I was invited in February 2005, having served in Armenia for six months, to tour a number of areas in the United States where there are many uh, Armenian Americans. Uh, my predecessor, John Ordway, had done the same thing. Yes. And, um, and the communities really appreciated that. Well, it, it's an it's a important part of uh, our work, I think, is to stay in touch with uh, Armenians in the United States. There are citizens, there are taxpayers, they're um, more interested in Armenia than anybody else, and we, we get good uh, value when we are able to cooperate with them. I was, of course, the question of the Armenian genocide came up, and the convention was not in force. Um, the 1948 convention uh, about genocide, but the uh, events that took place fit that description fully. Um, and so I think that we ought to call a spade a spade, but we should also recognize um, that, there are, that Turkey is a very important country, that Armenia needs relations with Turkey, and so on. I, in short, I didn't simply use the word genocide either uh, for effect or for shock value. I put it in a full context and I, I fear my only regret is this, that I think some people only heard the word genocide and didn't hear uh, everything else I was trying to say. Was your intent to spark a fire? Was your intent uh, to open a discussion, to sleep better at night? Um, it was a number of things. First of all, I had tried unsuccessfully within the State Department to get the State Department to be more forthcoming about this issue, not to treat it as a taboo that cannot be discussed. I wanted to move the State Department as far as the White House this is the George Bush White House. It's far more understanding and uh, forthcoming on this issue than the State Department. Why do you think? Bureaucracy um, and, and maybe a, a tin ear um, for, for, for some human rights issues uh, mm. to a certain extent. Um, I was unsuccessful within the State Department system and I, I really, this was the 90th anniversary, remember, yes. Uh, we've been going around telling governments all over the world that they should listen to civil society. Well, civil society in the form of experts, academic people, um, public intellectuals, including uh, people like Orhan Pamuk in Turkey, have all been saying that this was a terrible event, that it was a genocide. And the U.S. government is unable to say it. It struck me as... as uh, absolutely outrageous. You know, this is interesting that we're having this discussion post WikiLeaks. The servants on the ground, those who with the political ear on the ground, uh, do hear things, sometimes right, sometimes wrong, um, send them to the capital, and it's not always that that influences policy. Well, of course. Um, Foreign Service officers of all countries do their best to um, inform themselves as to what's going on. That's why they're there. That's why they're there. They're, they're not quite the same as journalists because they, uh, they try to judge intentions. But you'll notice in the WikiLeaks, uh, at least in American telegrams uh, from the field, we always report the facts and then there may be a comment. Right. Um, and so that's just the way our newspapers work. The facts come first and then there's an editorial page. 
um, which I think is very important. Diplomacy needs to be conducted in, in confidence. So I deplore what happened. I believe the, the problem has been fixed, by the way. In and what way? should not happen Nobody's again. going to write anything anymore. No, no. The, 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 uh, the um, provision of sharing these telegrams, which made their loss possible, has been uh, stopped. I mean, it came down, unfortunately, to a funding issue. Um, the State Department was under pressure to share its products more widely after the attack on the World Trade Center to make sure that nobody was missing anything. The State Department could not afford to set up its own sharing mechanism, so it, it shipped a lot of these telegrams into the Defense Department's so-called SIPRNET, oh. which was a, um, a very Water. wide method of sharing things, as we now know, down to very uh, junior levels. And that's, that's what caused the problem. That's been fixed. Well, seems to me part of the problem is also assuming that distribution necessarily means better judgment and evaluation, but that's a different well, discussion. Well, yes, but on your question there, uh, um, of course, uh, people in Washington have, or any capital, have access to many sources of information. Sure. Um, if they're smart, they'll listen to their ambassadors. Um, because just because a that's story... That's why they're there. That's right, they're there. And they talk to people who know. Um, and they exchange ideas and they can talk about hypothetical situations and have serious conversations. So, and that's precisely why these conversations should be protected. Uh, it's not that there's any hanky-panky or uh, bad faith. It's just, it's just like family correspondence. But you were saying you don't think this, it, the... the outcome is necessarily a bad thing, although you said you deplored the... What I would say is this, um, I am, uh, although I deplore the, the breach of confidentiality, I must say I think uh, the things we've seen stand up very well as products of good work by our Foreign Service. Uh, and to some extent, the American public in particular, I think, should be pleased that their employees in the field are, are doing such a good job. Well, I think in the Armenian public uh, in many ways has learned how sometimes messages do get there and sometimes they don't, but at the, on the other hand, how this whole process is so beautifully institutionalized in the American system. It's all there. It's, it's just well, in the, independent of the individual. Uh, I, I think that uh, your listeners um, if they look at the WikiLeaks and they think back to what they knew about the times that are being described, they'll see that there's a rough correspondence. Um, that we were seeing the same things that they were. Just as in Tunisia, um, the yes. American Embassy was reporting on the, uh, the financial um, Plains uh, and, and crimes involvements. Of, the, of the ruling family, and they were seeing the same things that, sure. that Tunisians saw. You've been in Armenia now for a few days. What kinds of questions are people asking you? What are your reactions? Well, uh, um, my reactions are that uh, things are looking very nice here in, in Yerevan. There are a lot of buildings that have been spruced up. Uh, the streets are, are looking well. There have been improvements in traffic flow in some cases, although there's more traffic. Um, so I, I see positive um, outer signs, lots of beautiful new construction. I haven't been outside Yerevan and I've always worried about the, um, the discrepancy between sure. Yerevan and smaller towns and, and, and the countryside. So I won't have time to, to get out of Yerevan on this trip, I'm afraid. Will, will you have time? You'll come back. I certainly hope to, and uh, as does my wife, who couldn't come this time. And uh, will Ratapal be on the list of possible visits? Um, not this time. Uh, I will share with you, though, that I went with my wife um, a few days ago in Washington to the um, event on Capitol Hill, um, which was marking 20 years uh -huh. of the existence of the Karabakh Republic. And so we, we went there to inform ourselves, and uh, um, uh, we'll do that again. 
I find myself in asking you questions being a little bit protective. Are you uh, really open? I mean, you're now really an academic. You're now an expert on the region and the country as opposed to being a foreign service uh, official or, or a diplomat. Are you restrained in any way? Will your book be restrained in any way? Um, I consider myself a free man. Um, I don't consider myself a great expert on, on anything. Um, I, I dabble in many things. Um, I, I try to give people uh, the best advice I can uh, when they ask me. I have written a book. I'll go back to that book. I had put it on the back burner. It's basically written, but I've put it on the back burner at the time of the protocols. I think now um, I'll go back to it and try to bring it out in the next year or two. We look forward to reading it. We look forward to hearing you uh, speak publicly in the next couple of weeks. We'll bring excerpts from those events to our listeners. We're very happy that you're here, and we hope we'll continue this conversation with you over Skype and, and other ways. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you.